Welcome to Wacky Wednesdays, where everyone has a chance to show off their car mods. And here's this week's winner. What's up, Scotty and YouTube? Today we're gonna to be featuring my 67 Fastback GT390 four-speed car, and I'm gonna walk around it, let you guys listen to it, show you the interior, the engine, and uh, yeah, so let's get started. 67 is the uh, first year for this body style. So this is the second body style of the Mustang. 65 and six were a lot smaller cars. So in my opinion, this is the best looking and most sought after is the 67 Fastback Mustang. And uh, a real quick way to determine whether it's a 67 or eight are these quarter panel uh, louvers right here behind the uh, front door. So uh, that is 67 only. 68 had that deleted right there and it was just kind of a smooth shaved. So uh, that's one of my favorite features of that. Also, this is a, a true GT car. So in 67, you had the iconic GT stripe right here along the uh, rocker panel. And then you had the GT emblems on the fenders right there. So on this car, I have the uh, Magna 500s. They aren't factory to the car, but they are factory Ford Magna 500s. And then I got the iconic uh, BF Goodrich uh, radial TAs on it. So just, it just gives it the old muscle car look and uh, they're very nice tires. And uh, I actually just put these tires on the car um, right before I drove it to Myrtle Beach for Mustang week uh, this past September. We're gonna move on to the front of the car. Since this is a GT, it does have the GT fog lights in the grill right here. And then also it has the GT turn signal hood, which now the uh, new S550 Mustang uh, incorporated that from 67. So when you uh, turn the turn signals on, it indi the indication turns on right here. So it's pretty cool to have people uh, riding the car that's never seen that before and then telling them that's factory from back in 1967. Also on the outside right here, you have these swing windows. So I guess it's for a lot of smokers back then so that you can ash out while it was raining. But uh, this car has no AC, so uh, you open it up, a uh, cool little breeze on your legs, it uh, kind of helps out a lot. So. I really enjoy that. Then right here, we actually have the uh, vented louvers, which is uh, fastback only. And uh, since 67 is the new body style, it actually has 12 instead of the uh, typical five found on the uh, 65 and 66 uh, models. All right, let's move on to the back of the car. Here in the back, since this is a true GT, we have the iconic pop-off gas lid right here, which is one of my favorite features as well. And it's right in the middle, so it doesn't matter what side of the pump you uh, go to, you, uh, you'll, you'll always be able to get gas. And then we have the iconic uh, Mustang on the uh, deck lid right here. So uh, 67 was actually the first uh, year to actually have the uh, letters Mustang in the back across the uh, deck lid. I think they carried that all the way to uh, 70. All right, before we move on to the interior, I just wanted to show you guys the exterior paint on this. Um, this paint job is almost 17 years old. My dad actually restored this car and he painted it himself and it is still looking very nice as you all can see the reflection of the sky. And I uh, just wanna show you all the gaps. The hood gaps and everything are all pretty much perfect. Front headlight buckets are very nice. It's hard to find an old Mustang with uh, these kind of gaps on here. And uh, the doors just open and close beautiful nice firm shuts all right so this car is a factory with deluxe interior which is pretty rare for these cars um, which comes uh, standard and deluxe is the uh, aluminum dashboard right here brushed aluminum door panels as well uh, a lot of people that do the resto mods and stuff like that in the uh, Eleanor kits um, they kind of just put the uh, brushed aluminum in their car but it's not truly a deluxe interior um, this door shell is actually its own part number being deluxe interior. It has this uh, grill down here with the, uh, s the speaker hole and the uh, courtesy light. So uh, a lot of people don't actually incorporate that when they try to uh, put deluxe interior in their car. So and then this uh, door panel as well as deluxe. Um, also with the deluxe package are these seats. You have these emblems uh, into the seats right there. And then you also have these hard back seats with the uh, stainless steel trim around there. Extremely rare, and uh, they go for <laughs> quite a bit on eBay. So uh, one of my favorite things of the uh, car is the lower console right here. You can actually, when you remove your seat belt and it's not in use, you actually have these seat belt holders right here, which is pretty nice. 
And then the uh, right here in the center, right above the uh, four-speed shifter, we have what I call an easy-bake oven. So uh, it's pretty cold here in Indiana right now, so I open that up and you get a lot more heat out right there. So you can also put uh, some food in there to warm it up a little bit. So we've got the uh, aftermarket, just classic looking uh, Mustang cassette tape right there. So, and then there's an the ashtray right here. All right, so let's move on to the uh, other favorite part of the interior. We're gonna look up though. Right here, we got the uh, overhead console. So, uh, pretty rare. Uh, 67 was the first year to offer this, and uh, this car has it factory. Um, right up here in the front, we have some uh, lights. They actually say map on them, because back in the day, you didn't have an iPhone to see where you're at on Google Maps. You actually had to press the map light and then uh, open the big map while you're driving or your passenger's driving at night and try to figure out where you guys were. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then on the back, right here, we have these uh, rear courtesy lights, which is standard in every fastback. And then we have the uh, fold down seat, which this car is actually not equipped with a fold down seat. That's supposed to be bolted up there. But uh, 67 was the first year to offer as an option not to get the fold down seat. You can see this crease right here. This is where the actual fold down seat. So it actually fully cover this. And then this would be carpet with uh, chrome trim. And then the back would actually be a trap door where you could open it and put your skis in the back or a uh, long board or whatever you wanted to that wouldn't fit in the trunk by itself. So yes, I would like to have a, a trap door. It's cool but it's actually more rare not to have it as it was an option not to have it for the first year so i think it's pretty cool that mine doesn't have it but i would like to have one so but i'm just trying to keep this car uh original also here in the back on fastback only we have these uh air vents right here that you can open and close that way if you're riding in the back and you want to circulate air if you have the uh, windows up you can do so so i thought that was pretty cool um and then uh I do have the aftermarket steering wheel, the Grant steering wheel right here. Um, I think I'm gonna probably end up putting the original 67 back in, have the big uh, horn button right here. Um, but while we're here and I'm sitting right here, let's go ahead and look over the instrument cluster. So uh, this car actually came factory with a clock right here. Uh, I guess it was part of the uh, deluxe interior group. You can get all this stuff without having deluxe interior, but I think it was standard uh, for deluxe. We also have the uh, 120 mile an hour speedometer and uh, 68 actually uh, offered the 140. So uh, first year for uh, 120 right there. Also, we have the uh, 6,000 uh, RPM TAC right here. Um, pretty, pretty rare to have a TAC. Um, you could actually get the tax even in automatics, but uh, just because it was GT didn't mean it come with the tax. So that was actually a, a, a special option, and uh, the wiring harness is actually different if you have a tax than if you didn't have a tax. So uh, it, it's very hard to actually just add one in without replacing the whole dash harness because it's all built in. But uh, 68 actually started uh, going to eight grand instead of six. So uh, this is pre period correct for my car. And then we're going to go ahead and go down to the floorboard right here. And uh, as you can see, my brake pedal right here, it's got the uh, emblem for the disc brakes. This car is standard equipped with the uh, four piston Kelsey Hayes disc brakes. Um, they were on all the Shelbys and they have uh, quick release pads, which uh, make it really easy to uh, slide the pads in and out. And I guess Shelby really liked that because it was real easy to race with that way. So uh, this car stops good. Of course, the rear still have drums, whether it's a GT or not. Um, it does have a nine inch rear end with uh, 390 gears in it. And then uh, we have the uh, brights right here with the foot. That's your brights. So you don't have to take your hands off the wheel to uh, turn the brights on or off, which is pretty cool. And then this little guy right here actually does the uh, windshield wipers, which is pretty neat. Um, actually, if you press, this is a manual pump. So uh, the harder you press it, the the harder it'll squirt out. So uh, they did actually option the automatic ones, but actually like the manual ones. Because uh, if you have a couple friends behind you in the drive-thru, you can actually squirt them. So uh, let's uh, test that out real quick. All right, let's see if we can uh, hit Alan with this. Yep. 
Let's get it. Oh yeah. All right, so anyway, that's funny. I just had to show you guys. Uh, yeah, you can uh, really uh, make some people mad through the drive-thru if you do that. Or if someone's walking behind your car like a buddy or something, you just do it and they really don't know where it came from. So that's pretty cool. Also, uh, one last thing while we're down here on the floorboard. Um, I do have this uh, oil pressure uh, gauge right here. This is not factory, but uh, you know, it's a must have for any of these old cars. Um, also, it's uh, stainless steel, so it kind of kind of flows with the uh, brushed aluminum interior like I have. So I thought that was pretty cool to incorporate that in here. Um, that's probably been in there since the 70s. All right, so this is the GT390 and uh, 67 was actually the first year that uh, the Mustang had the big block in it and this car has it. Uh, they all came with the 390 uh, GT uh, four barrel engine, which is considered the S code, which is the engine code for the car. Also, the crown jewel, I would say, for the engine bay would be my uh, air cleaner right here. Right here. It took me about five years to find it, and I finally scored it and got it at the uh, 50th anniversary Mustang meet in Charlotte and back in 2014. Um, this is uh, extremely rare. It's 67 GT only, and uh, you can tell that it's a, a GT one by these uh, grills on both sides right here. And uh, this actually does not have the EGR port right here in the front. Uh, some states you actually had that. So these are just hard to find because a lot of people put the big chrome ones on there and stuff. So these just got tossed out back in the day and uh, now they're kind of uh, hard to find. Um, also, this chrome top was kind of its first. Um, they actually incorporated the GT390 top lid on the 69 and 70 Boss 302s. So uh, that's one reason the tops are so hard to find a nice shape. This is original shape as well. It's not an aftermarket reproduction. Um, so they're hard to find because a lot of people put them on the Boss 302 cars. So they take them from the 67s. Um, also being the 390 GT, we have the uh, powered by Ford uh, chrome valve covers. And then um, I went ahead and got the Autolite battery top. Um, it's just to make a newer battery look old. Um, the original batteries are extremely expensive, so it just kind of works out and uh, kind of helps out at some shows. Um, and then here is the, the windshield bag right here that we were squirting Allen with. So 67 is actually the last year for the bag. And then they moved on to uh, uh, the plastic um, containers for 68. 68 actually got a lot of plastic uh, stuff in the Mustangs. That's kind of where they were taken over with all the plastic stuff and because uh, it was a lot cheaper to produce and stuff like that. Um, then right here we have the power disc brake booster right here on the driver's side. Um, we do have the uh, export uh, strut brace right here for the shock towers. And then just to show you guys, I'm sure some of y'all are curious on this. This is an S-code car, true S-code. The 390s actually had this shroud right here. And uh, 68 uh, had the uh, 428, which was the first year that Ford offered the 428. But in 67, you could actually get a 67 Shelby with the 428. So Shelby didn't even use the 390. But being 67 factory from Ford, the 390 was the best you could get unless you special ordered the uh, 427 side oiler. And those cars are worth big money because few of them were produced. Um, Let's move up to the top of the hood real quick. Here is the wiring harness for the turn signals that I was showing you guys earlier, um, right there. I did install a new water pump um, over the summer and uh, you can see the engine's not pristine, it's dirty. I've actually put about 120,000 miles on this car, um, outside paint and all. Um, I've been driving this car since I was 16 years old. I actually took my driving test in it and passed the first time no power steering four speed car i parallel parked it perfect and that lady just checked off and said man you can drive and uh it's kind of funny because my twin sister actually failed uh two times so she's <laughs> she was upset and cried but of course she wasn't driving this car i was driving it but um when my dad fixed it up um i actually got to drive it out in the country you know on some back roads and stuff when i was like 15 so i kind of knew how to drive the car before i actually took the test which was a big advantage for me but uh, yeah, I actually drive this car. It's no uh, trailer queen. Like I said, my dad painted it almost 17 years ago. And uh, it, you can see it's still very nice, especially for all the miles I've put on it. I've drove this thing to uh, Pennsylvania, um, South Carolina. Here you go, right here, Carlisle Nationals. We actually got second place there in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Um, 
but yeah, I drive it, no trailer queen, but it just shows if you take care of something, you know, you can make it last. Uh, I take very good care of it, you know, I don't do anything crazy in it, and uh, just keep it clean, you know, keep it waxed, keep all the dirt off and everything, and uh, it's kind of my time capsule. I guess that's enough talking. Um, let's, uh, let's fire this thing up for you guys. That's what I call the bubbling. You can never get tired of that. It actually has the uh, Flowmaster cat back with the uh, stock manifolds up front. And uh, I grew up listening to this all day long and I can't get enough of it. And it's just iconic Mustang muscle car sound for the GT390. So let's get in there and do a little rev and then we'll do a uh, drive off so you all can hear it rip. To have your car mod shown on my channel here, check this out. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.